to worship. Okay, there we are. You guys are awake there. Good morning. We're so gathered that we are so grateful that you can gather with us here in the park. We are still recording our worship service on my cell phone over here. So Marty, you can wave to the camera. You are just in line. No sleeping, no singing. Well, you got glasses on. Um, so a few announcements, how we'll do some things in worship. Uh, Trish is handing out bulletins, so if you need a bulletin and haven't gotten one, just flag her down. Um, if you haven't put your offering in the offering plate, you can do that at communion time. We'll start from this end and have people come forward to receive communion up here. And then you can slide your offering underneath the top offering plate and inside the bottom offering plate so it doesn't blow away. Uh, we have fellowship time afterwards, which I heard involves some ice cream if it doesn't get melted. They look very excited to be serving. <laughs> you can look at your bulletin for announcements. Uh, ones that I particularly want to point out to you and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us stand together and pray our prayer of the day printed in the bulletin. Oh God, this is my story, this is my song, praising my teacher thing. Okay. First reading is from Mark chapter 6 verses 4 through 29. As Jesus and his disciples began to attract attention, Mark recalls the story of John the Baptist's martyrdom. Like John, Jesus and his disciples will also suffer at the hands of those who oppose to the gospel of salvation. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching for Jesus' name and became known. Some were saying John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, 
and this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, he was pleased. She pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the end of the first reading. Please join me in this psalm. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our scripture reading for today is going to come from our Old Testament reading, the book of of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall make, be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid to waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of his house of Israel. The land is not able to bear his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah, 
burn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is the temple of our kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, a dresser of sycamore trees, and the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. no specific little children to come up for a children's sermon, but since you're all children of God, I will continue to share my children's sermon because it's an informative piece of information. From the book of Amos, it has a word that you probably didn't know. The kings of the northern kingdom often screwed up and led the people astray. And so Amos, the farmer, was called by God. So farmers, you can be called by God. Amos felt called by God to go to the temple in Bethel. What a pointed message for us as a community and our church name. Farmers, called by God to go to Bethel. No one? Anyone feeling the call? And so we have this book of Amos as a collection of his sermons in chapters 1 and 2, poems in chapters 3 through 6, and his visions for 7 through 9. Amos, as a farmer coming into the temple of Bethel, was not welcomed. Not just by the king that he was being called out by, but also by the priests. If you are a priest in ancient Israel, and a prophet shows up, you know God is not happy with you and what you're doing in the temple. The priests say to Amos, go back to being a farmer because we don't want to hear from you. But Amos is a prophet. He wants to stick to being a, a farmer, but he knows he's been called by God and therefore he is a prophet of the Lord. And prophets are God's mouthpieces to the people. So when the priests say they don't want to hear Amos, they're really saying, we don't want to hear the word of the Lord. When prophets come speaking, many don't want to hear what they're saying. The reading from Mark is another prophetic voice, and that those powers do not wish to hear. The text from Mark is the story of John the Baptist beheading. And this is exactly the known fear for prophets whose words come from God and have accusations against the temple and those in power, calling out idol worship, the neglecting of the poor, while you prosper are never nice words to hear. For John, it leads to his head being cut off and for a people not listening to what God is saying. But God's people are given a chance while, live, while listening to Amos as he speaks to them. Amos even tells them of his vision of the consequences if they don't come to listen to him, if they don't listen to God, if they don't turn their hearts back to God. And here's what the prophet Amos is trying to tell the northern kingdom. He begins with this message to the nation surrounding Israel. First, accusing the neighbors of the nation of violence, hitting each community, each nation surrounding Israel, all the while creating a bullseye around Israel before narrowing in and calling out the violence that is happening in their kingdom second thing he does is specifically calling out Israel for ignoring the poor. 
When you ignore the poor, it in turn creates a system of poverty, including here for Amos and his six country, debt slavery, whereby people sell themselves into slavery to pay off debts. And on top of that, limiting access to legal representation in courts which in turn then continues a system of poverty and indebtedness. And this is exactly how you get generational poverty, where one person in the family gets stuck in a hole, and then the following generations are born into that hole and unable to get out of it. There are specific laws in place that God has called the people, so this kind of poverty wouldn't happen. And the prophet has to call it out because they're not following the law. Amos doesn't just speak in lectures to tell them to get their act in order, but be God's people. He uses poems written both to Israel as a nation and specifically to its leaders. While today we might not use poetic language, we do listen to music. Music that tells stories is disconnected from your actions of living out your faith in your community. One of the most common and well-known verses from Amos then says, Let justice flow like a So if they don't listen to God and turn their hearts back to God, Amos comes with this prediction for them that a great nation will come and conquer them and leave their city desolate to your faithful people and those who turn their hearts to God. The Lord has given us salvation in Christ our Savior. And when we turn our hearts to the Lord, we hear the word of the Lord, we will embrace justice, righteousness, and love our neighbor. We are people of the New Testament. God is not going to curse us to him. What is asked of us is to believe. And when we believe, our holy places, our places of worship, will teach and live out words of action, words of justice, righteousness, and loving our neighbor which is the true worship of God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Spirit, the Comforter. Amen. We will join together in our hymn of the day, so please stand as you are able.